in Canada, we have protected categories of hate, right? So it's a hate crime if it can be shown, if your utterance can be shown to be discriminate, discriminate against a protected class. Well, yes. Like, so, so, so it's not merely that you hurt people's feelings, right? It's, it's that correct. They have to hurt them for a particular reason. Well, it's a discriminatory. Sorry. So we have these two realms. We have the the human rights realm and we have the criminal realm. And we we've had hate speech restrictions in our criminal law for a good while, and they're rarely used. Um, the 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 human rights provisions are much more frequently used because because they're much less serious and much easier to trigger, much easier to complain about, and and they don't go to a court. They go to the, one of these tribunals, mm -hmm. right? But we, one of the problems is the dovetailing of this hate speech discriminatory practice idea along with the, the equality problem that I was just describing before, right? So as with any rule, this rule is going to be applied and interpreted in one direction and not the other. What I mean by that is, if you go around saying that uh, white people are, are, are hateful or privileged or colonists or whatever the case may be, that, that's pretty hateful. If you say they're all, you know, if you're white, you are X, you're being stereotypical and you're making a blanket statement about all these people who are white. That's not going to be entertained as hate speech because of the way that our equality law has been interpreted, which is, and this is one thing that the Ontario Human Rights Tribunal said fairly recently. They said, people who are white mm -hmm. cannot be discriminated against. Yeah, yeah, I really right? Right. They are not a protected group. They are not a protected group. So, some people, some animals are more equal than others. Exactly yeah. so. So, so this this kind of law, the hate speech law, is likely to be interpreted in that way, which is, oh, you can only utter hate speech against protected groups. If you if you utter hate speech against those other people who are not in one of those, there's groups, no hate speech against the oppressor class. It doesn't qualify. And by the way, this yeah. isn't theory. No, uh, this is no. so in, in Scotland, for example, they passed this bill on the 1st of April. Of course, they did yeah. recently. Uh, and uh, in the first week of it being passed, there were more reports of hate speech than there had been in the previous several years. And the reason was that many, many people reported a speech given by Hamza Youssef, the first minister of Scotland, in which he was being openly racist against white people. Right. Um, and of course, this is this isn't considered a hate crime. And you know, it was uh, the BBC interviewed Hamza Youssef, where they, the, the interviewer and the, uh, he himself laughed, sort of, you know, almost gratuitously. And, oh, how how silly! Uh, you know, people would suggest, of course, this is complete nonsense. And frankly, he said, I'm not aware of anyone who's not on the far right yeah. who would report this as right. hate speech. Right. Yeah. It, it's an absolute case of some animals are uh, more equal yes. than others. And the law is, I'm sure you would agree, is written specifically to create that situation. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and not originally written, but now interpreted, and, and now this idea has taken Well, place. look, once you create yeah. the idea of protected groups, then some animals are yeah. inevitably sure. more equal than others, sure, sure. right? One thing that you're referring to there, alluding to, is the weaponization of human rights. Yes. So, so if you if you go to an earlier conception of human rights, um, you could describe them as the right not to be abused by your government, you know, not to be thrown in jail without due process, not to be censored for this and that, uh, not to be tortured. Those are human rights. But today, human rights consists of the rights of some people in groups mm -hmm. to insist that other people in groups in groups embrace their own decisions. Yes. Right? Or so, else. So if you if so if I decide that I'm a man and you don't call me by my pronouns, then you are guilty of a violation of my human rights. That is a that's a very new idea. That is not the where we started with this. That's a weaponization because it means that human rights are a zero sum game. If I have human rights, that means you have less because I can insist that you behave in a certain way. This, this is about individuals now being able to determine how other individuals will, will behave. It's incredible. Okay, so now we have, we have another conjunction of, of pathological enabling here that I'd like to dwell on for a moment. So 
One of the things we alluded to earlier was the fact that Bill C-63 also opens, opens up the door, it facilitates, enables, and outright encourages anonymous, yes. anonymous denunciations. Now, the good thinkers would say, well, you want to put as few barriers in the way of the oppressed seeking redress for their victimization as possible, but that omits one very important detail, which is that if you can denounce for zero cost, then you weaponize denunciation and you put an immense, you put immense, you put the entire power of the state yes. in the hands of anyone who wants it. Yeah. Right? And it's anonymous. And so to what degree in Bill C-63 do you get to face your accuser, right? You don't even know who it is. So they can, you can be accused regardless of your intent, regardless of the factual uh, reality of your utterance by people who you who do not have to identify themselves or take any responsibility whatsoever if their denunciation turns out to be false, who are rewarded for doing so, who you do not get to confront. Well, at that point, I don't see you have a law system at all. You have rule, you don't even have rule by mob. You have rule by the worst elements of the mob. And the worst elements are gonna be those who will come crawling out of the woodwork like mad to weaponize their resentment by using the, the state's power they now have at their disposal, right? And rub their hands in glee at every opportunity to do that. There will be specialists in denunciation in no time flat. 